Madam Speaker, I rise to speak because I'm concerned about the well-being and interests of the residents of Aljunied, Hokang, and Pongo East. I'm concerned about their lives and their homes. They have been shortchanged by their members of parliament, and they have been kept in the dark. I'm concerned about the well-being and interests of all Singaporeans. Elected members of parliament are expected to be clean and honest and to act with integrity. This motion boils down to one word, trust. The people's trust, the MPs will keep their promises with integrity. The people's trust that we will always take seriously our full responsibility to serve our people and to serve their best interests. So, I'm sad to observe that the elected town councillors of AHPTC have betrayed the people's trust. They betrayed the people's trust in three ways. One, they betrayed the people's trust by failing to act in the best interests of the residents. Two, they betrayed the people's trust with a consistent pattern of evasive behaviour. Third, they betrayed the people's trust by promising to one thing and doing another. First, the Workers' Party have betrayed the trust of the residents of Aljunit, Hokang and Pongo East. Residents cannot trust the Workers' Party on several counts. For a start, residents cannot trust the Workers' Party to get them a good deal. In fact, the Workers' Party has gotten them a raw deal. Their managing agents, FMSS and FMSI, charge the highest rate in Singapore for their services. Compared to the MA fees paid by other town councils, residents paid more than $2 a unit, one year, $1.6 million, and this went on for four years. Now, till now, after all this discuss debate in the House, the public doesn't know, none of us knows, the reasons why FMSS and FMSI rates are higher than everywhere else. Residents cannot trust the elected town councillors not to sacrifice their long-term interests. In fact, these long-term interests are being sacrificed. $12 million were missing from their sinking fund. $12 million missing. It was only after the AGO pointed this out that this was put back. And even so, one year, after the financial year had ended, they still owed substantial sum to the sinking fund. If not for the Auditor General, the town councillors, the elected town councillors, would have kept the residents of Aljunit, Hokang and Pongo East in the dark. No nothing is transparent. Now this is a very serious matter. It is wrong for the town councillors to argue that as long as money was put back, Nothing was wrong in the first instance. The fact is, they put the money back only because they were caught. Why did this happen? Thank you. Either the MA is totally incompetent or they deliberately decided not to fill the sinking fund, to show a better financial picture and have a large operating account to pay for expenses, the largest item being the MA fees. This happened because the TC was running into cash flow problem from their profligate management and they put off paying to the sinking fund so that they may have money to pay. Now, clearly that is compromising the long-term interests of residents to enrich their friends. They did not forget to pay MA fees every month. They did not forget to collect SNCC from the honest, hardworking residents every month. But they forgot to pay large sums that were supposed to go into the sinking fund and repeatedly. 
Was it because the Finance and Investment Committee, chaired by Mr Chen Shou Mao, was not doing his work? Or was it another lapse by the chairman? No explanation has been forthcoming. Now, this is serious. Sinking funds are for long-term cyclical maintenance. We need to replace leaves for residents' safety, do major repairs, like re rewiring and re-roofing, repaint blocks. The safety of and well-being of residents and their homes are at stake. Down the line, residents may find their sinking fund is all depleted, with nothing left to maintain their town's safety and their well-being. When this happens, who suffers? Not the town council, not the MBA. Who suffers are the residents. Worst of all, they, don't, they won't know where the money has all gone. Now, this is a serious matter. In fact, the Town Council Act lists only three offences, and the use of sinking funds for operating expenses is one of them. It is precisely to guard against managing agents and town councils acting to meet short-term interests. Sadly, this is precisely what we are seeing, short-term opportunistic behaviour. Residents cannot trust elected town councillors to account honestly for where their money is. The town council cannot even keep basic accounts properly. You saw in the AGO report, inaccurate arrears, lapses in internal controls, poor records, late accounts, missing documents. These are not technical issues. This raises fundamental questions whether the accounts can be trusted. And all of this money comes from the people in one way or another. Whether it is SNCC that residents pay, or the sinking fund that was built out over the years from money paid by residents too, or the government grants that MND provides out of taxpayers' money. We can't even trust the books. We are in the dark about the true state of affairs. If we are not vigilant, can we be sure that down the road, somebody may not be cooking the books? Why did a surplus of $3.3 million in the, op in the operations become a deficit of $730,000 in just two years? Mr. Pritam Singh attributed everything to lift upgrading. Now, we must naturally ask, where did the money go? We have asked, but we haven't had a good answer. Though we may not be Obvious on the surface, beneath the surface, the town council is rotting, and the rot is serious. Now, I'm also very concerned about the second way in which the Workers' Party has betrayed people's trust, the pattern of behaviour, a consistent pattern of denial, deflection, and protection of their managing agent which suggests a serious rot is happening. Now, clearly, the managing agent's FMSS has failed. The elected members of the town council should be held responsible. They appointed the MA. They are responsible for supervising the MA for setting up proper structure. You can outsource work. You cannot outsource responsibility. The responsibility lies squarely with the members of parliament on the council. Why did the elected town councillors allow such a deeply flawed structure to be set up in the very first place? We have not heard any good answer. Yesterday, Ms Lim said an accra record of ownership of FMSS was tapered. Was it discussed at any town council meeting? Was it debated? I think she has not given us the full truth. Now, the elected town councillors, instead of disciplining their MA and taking corrective action, defended them strongly. In 2013, they said in Parliament, and I quote, 
FMSS was engaged based on its director's experience in property management, professional skills, and track record in running Ho Kang Town Council, unquote. But what we have heard in this house so far is that they are inexperienced. And these mistakes happen because people resigned. But Ms. Sylvia Lim assured us in this house that they are professional and experienced. So who is <coughs> telling us the accurate version? And you're talking about experience. How much experience do you need to know that you cannot be handing money to your supporters at the expense of overcharging your residents? How much experience do you need to truthfully disclose information to your auditors, including your own auditors? In fact, the AGO audits would not have been necessary if you have been honest and forthright in disclosing information to your own auditors. Where is the transparency that Mr. Pritam Singh has been advocating so strongly? The elected town councillors have acted in the best interest of their friends, the well-paid managing agents. They have neglected the interests of the residents of Aljunit, Hokang and Pongo East. Can residents trust that you are acting in their interest? Why are you so protective? Why are they so protective of their expensive managing agent that messed up the town council's work? Because they are the party supporters and friends? Yesterday, in this house, Ms. Silver Lim rejected the suggestion that the arrangement with FMSS was to benefit their friends. So may I ask, are they your friends? Or at least, were they? Yes. Did they benefit? Yes. Richly so. The structure that the Workers' Party set up allowed this to happen. You awarded contracts at these exorbitant rates and allowed them to get away with it. What other conclusions can be drawn? Now, on the other side, we know that AHPTC's financial position, even based on your own figures, which may not be the most reliable, has deteriorated sharply. The finances are now in the red. From a surplus of $3.3 million in the, op in the operations, it has now become a deficit of $730,000 in just two years. It's astounding. Two short years. The Workers' Party asserted that no money was lost. Now, what is astounding is how they even twisted the comments of the AGO to justify the case. Ms. Hari Kumar has dealt with this earlier on, but Ms. Pritam Singh continued to repeat this. I urge you to read the auditor's report carefully. Now, at the very least, I think you would agree with me that it is not honest to twist the AGO, AGO's comments deliberately in this self-serving way. Now, all the Workers' Party MPs have said that they will take collective responsibility. They have said that they will support this motion. I hope the support is in substance, not just form. If they support the motion in substance, one would have expected that they would conduct a forensic audit, that they would take legal action against the managing agent's FMSS, that they will file accounts immediately, on time, as required by the law and any administrative action, that they will put in place checks and balances where there is a severe conflict of interest. And the residents deserve to know what had happened. Are you prepared to come clean and explain and answer all the questions which have been raised in this house? How exactly would you safeguard the interests of residents?
The third way that the Workers' Party betrayed the trust of our people is that they promise one thing and do another, quite the opposite. They say something in one forum, then in another forum they say something else. The Workers' Party's platform in the last general election was First World Parliament, and I quote, where the opposition will, I quote, function as a robust check and balance against the government, unquote. Now, over the last two days, we have seen so clearly how they have created a system where there's no check, no balance. You can't even check yourselves. Or are you not willing to check yourself? They have been entrusted with running a town council. Where is the first world town council that they should be delivering? Instead, we have a town council who cannot account for where the resources go to. And in fact, the real check in this instance came from the government, the Auditor General's office. You have a pattern of behaviour where you did not answer to your own auditors, as a result of which the Auditor General had gone in. If not for the Auditor General's office, we would not have discovered, Singaporeans would not have discovered this mess that the elected town councillors have, create, have created. The Workers' Party also spoke vigorously about accountability. But surely you would agree that the most basic aspect of accountability is to be able to keep proper accounts, proper accounts of the money that have been entrusted to you. I can understand if you're keeping accounts for the first time, but you're not. You have told residents your experience in running Hokang Town Council. And so till today, we do not know the true state of affairs, true state of the accounts of AHPTC. The Workers' Party said one thing and then did another. Have they been consistent with their statements? Mr. Lau started the debate yesterday by saying that you'll be accountable, then immediately Ms. Sylvia Lim tried to explain away all the failings. Mr. Lau said that he would account in Parliament. And indeed, Ms. Lim told the press earlier that the Workers' Party will explain in Parliament. But Mr. Singh says in chamber yesterday that he will only answer to his residents door to door. In fact, Mr. Pritam Singh spoke about transparency. The Workers' Party will press the government for as much information as possible. But they do not even provide information to their own auditors. What the House witnessed yesterday is unbelievable. Unbelievable. Mr. Pritam Singh, who had said this, I quote, We will constantly press the government for more information, especially since it is so selective with the information it releases, unquote. When asked pertinent questions on transparency and accountability by Mr. Shamugan, Mr. Pritam Singh said he would not give a reply in Parliament. The first world Parliament which he claims he wants to build, and which Mr. Lau Tia Kiang said he would account to. He refuses to answer to Parliament. So why is Mr. Singh so selective about where he answers his questions? One of my colleagues bumped into Mr. Yi Jong a month ago. When he asked him about the town council, he evaded a question which is, and gave him a non-answer. Answer will be given at the right time, at the right place. And when pressed that he was a WP Workers' Party Central Executive Committee member and should have asked the party chairman to know what was going on, he said this, and I quote, it's a matter for the elected members, unquote. Just last evening, Mr. Yi Jong and a group of his worker party, Workers' Party supporters 
dressed in blue, were asked by a resident last night about what was going on in the AHPTC. But he didn't answer and walked away quickly. So is this the answer Mr Singh promised to residents? A WPCC member and his activists met residents and evaded the question. So, weren't answer auditors? Weren't answer parliament? Weren't answer residents? Who is left in Singapore that the Workers' Party think is worthy of an answer? Who is left in Singapore that the Workers' Party think is worthy of an answer? Sadly, we saw in this house yesterday how this pattern of behaviour of saying whatever suits them for the moment among the Workers' Party's MPs. Mr Lao Tia Kiang claimed that it is difficult for the opposition to run town councils or get qualified people to run town councils and they have to start from scratch. But the PAP town councils also started from scratch when they were first formed. The PAP MP town councillors had no experience in municipal administration. But they had plenty of integrity and sense of responsibility. Mr Law said that we must therefore depoliticise the transitioning process. Newly elected members of parliament should not be tested, implying that they should simply be elected to oppose the government in a first world parliament and not to have to show that they can actually govern. This is the precise opposite of the philosophy of the town council scheme. Indeed, it is the opposite of what Mr Lao Tia Kiang used to maintain, running Ho Kang Town Council for 20 years until the Workers' Party's team messed up in AHPTC. Mr Lao has been you know, contrary to what the PAP thinks and claims, there's nothing to running town councils. The opposition run them as well as any PAP town councils, and therefore people should vote for them. Mr. Lau calls for the town council issue to be depoliticized, but he's politicking. How can he be disclaiming responsibility to govern locally while asserting the right to challenge the government nationally? What is even more disturbing is what the WP Workers' Party MPs have been promising residents. Let me just quote three examples. First quote. The Workers' Party has over 20 years of experience in managing town councils well, and not just small town councils but a huge GRC town council in our unit. We know the ins and outs of running a constituency. Even when obstacles were thrown in our path to trip us up, we still have managed to ensure residents' needs are well taken care of. This was by Mr. Jarrod Giam when he spoke to residents at a rally on the 23rd of January, 2013. Now, earlier on, we heard Mr. Peng Eng Huat spoke about all the difficulties. But your fellow colleagues, your fellow party members, say we know the ins and outs of running a constituency. Even when obstacles are thrown in our path to trip us up, we've managed. But why are you attributing all the problems that you have to staff resigning, to difficulties, to challenges in IT system and so on? I do not understand. Let me move on to a second quote. If, workers, if WP wins Pongo East, I'm confident that we will manage the town council competently. WP has more than 20 years of experience managing Hokang SMC. After GE 2011, we quickly adapted to take charge of our junior GRC under a very short time frame, under a very short time frame. 
we will take over the town council functions with as little disruption as possible to the residents. I have the experience and know-how in running a town council. This was by Ms. Lili Lian at the same rally to residents in January 2013. So, we have heard that you can take charge of a town council, a big one too, under a very short time frame. So, all the explanations that all the Workers' Party members have given us so far, which is the correct version, that you have plenty of problems, plenty of challenges, or that you can take charge within a very short time frame, that you can overcome any obstacle, and that you have no disruption, and that you are experienced and have the know-how. Which is the correct version, may I ask? Let me mention a third quote. Workers' Party's <coughs> MPs are committed to being politically accountable to voters for town management under the current regime. Whatever else is done in other countries, the responsibility for town management has been legislated to the MPs under the TCA. We accept this responsibility and have pledged during elections to manage town councils entrusted to us to the best of our ability. We intend to continue keeping this promise. We intend to continue keeping this promise. We accept responsibility. We intend to continue keeping this promise. This is by Ms. Sylvia Lim in a parliamentary session on the 13th of May, 2013. So as you can see, these are all quite recent. So I was most astounded to hear what Mr. Lao Tia Kiang said yesterday in this house, that we should depoliticize, we should look at the transitioning and all that. So Mr. Lau, you are the Secretary General of the Workers' Party and have just said the exact opposite of what Ms. Silver Lim, Chairman of the Workers' Party, said in this House in 2013. Did you just change your mind when things went wrong in AHPTC? Or you never believed in what you were doing? Or were Mr. Gerard Giam, Ms. Lili Lian and Ms. Sylvia Lim misleading residents when they made those speeches and that the Workers' Party had no intention whatsoever of fulfilling your promises. So can you tell this House and all Singaporeans what are your real beliefs and values? Do you have any conviction? Or do you just say whatever is experienced for the moment even if it means misleading Singaporeans. Is it not dishonest to claim that you believe in something and do the opposite and that to say one thing in one forum and a completely different thing at another occasion? There also seems to be several versions of the Workers' Party floating around. Which one do we trust? the one that claims to be transparent and accountable, which wants to build a first world parliament, or that one the politics and say whatever that is convenient. The one that politics like Mr. Pritam Singh to try to avoid answering in parliament, but he's prepared to say whatever he wants and to whoever he wants to outside. So, which Workers' Party is the true Workers' Party? What is most disturbing in this entire sorry episode is the way that the Workers' Party has sought to downplay the crux of the matter, sought to deflect the issue by playing victim of a challenging operating environment that the op opposition faced and then claiming inexperience. Let me recount what happened in the House yesterday. Mr. Lau started with a clever opening to play victim that the opposition faced a challenging operating environment 
and that's why we had all these lapses. And then you insinuated that town councils are politicised, and then you took an entirely different line from what Ms. Silver Lim and the rest of the MPs have been saying. Ms. Silver Lim went through a lot of details on the various AGO observations, circulated an action plan, and promised to do better. But Ms. Lim said the sinking funds had been put back, but she never told any one of us that they were caught by their own auditor and then the AGO for not putting money into the sinking fund. They were forced to put the money back. Ms. Lim, nor the other members of parliament, never answered the critical question. Were all town councillors aware of the structure of the ownership of FMSS that leads to substantial overpayment? And was there a proper discussion on how you are going to safeguard the interests of the residents? And Ms. Lim sought to show that the lapses were technical, bean counting, and the Workers' Party would fix them by hiring more accountants and doing more checks. And then, of course, I mean, that is a dodge. And then, of course, we had we heard from the other MPs as well. Ms. Lim also circulated a table showing various committees and former checks. Reading it, I was very impressed. I'd like to point out to this House that the AGO reports indicated that as of 12 December 2014, the last Finance and Investment Committee meeting was held in April 2014. They did not meet for eight months. But the table that Ms. Lim circulated said they met monthly. This is in the AGO reports. You can read that. So it's, is this another instance of saying one thing and doing another? So sadly, we saw, and today, you know, we heard Mr. Pritam Singh, we heard Mr. Peng Eng Huat. They explained all the technical details, they sought to deflect, but they never got to the heart of the issue. They never got to answer the questions that need to be answered. I was hoping that Mr. Pritam Singh would change his mind and tell us today, but he didn't. So we saw a big wayang in this house. Ordinarily, such a wayang would have been comical. But in the context of how important integrity and trust is in how we govern this little red dot, I'm so disappointed, I'm so saddened by this entire sorry saga. What we are seeing are not isolated lapses or behaviours. What we are seeing is a troubling pattern of dishonest, misleading behaviour. To say one thing, but to do the opposite. To say one thing that suits them, to residents, then to say a different thing in Parliament or elsewhere when it suits them better. This is wrong. This is a serious problem of integrity. It costs the Workers' Party nothing to promise the world. But there is a real cost to Singaporeans. Real lives are affected when they break their promises. Let me now conclude with why this motion is important for all Singaporeans. At the Ministry of Education and in our schools, tens and thousands of teachers spend many, many hours striving to provide the best possible education for our children so that they may have a better future. Tens and hundreds of thousands of parents are concerned about their children's future. We spend day and night thinking about our children's future. But our children can only have a better future if Singapore as a nation succeeds and remains relevant 
to the world, that we retain the values and the qualities that are essential for our success. We have seen how in many countries, when elected officials engage in self-serving practices, when they put their interests ahead of the public interest, when they do not act with integrity, and when they put the interests of their cronies first, the, countries, the country fails. And it is the men in the streets, and the young, and the future generation, who suffer the most. As a little red dot, good governance is critical to Singapore's future. Elected public officials must act with integrity and a deep sense of responsibility and serve our people wholeheartedly. In the many decisions we take, there may be errors, human or system, but what matters most is that elected officials act with integrity and do our very best to serve the public interest. As Minister Corbyn Wan pointed out yesterday, a town council requires elected MPs to govern and not just politic. It's easy to shout campaign slogans and make all sorts of promises. But do you really believe in what you say wholeheartedly and walk the talk? Running a town council in a clean, competent and accountable way is a test of the integrity of the MP and his sense of responsibility and accountability. In other words, can we trust him or her? This motion is not about partisan politics. I have no joy pointing out the many failings and questionable practices of the Workers' Party. This motion is important for all Singaporeans because it is about our long-term future. Unless elected members of Parliament act with integrity and a deep sense of responsibility and take the trust of the people seriously, we will not be able to maintain a system of good governance, clean, honest, accountable, competent and pass this on to our future generations. We must not betray the trust of Singaporeans. Singaporeans deserve better. So let us all honour the trust that Singaporeans have placed in us. Madam Speaker, I support the motion.